Welcome today, everyone, to our Resource YYC podcast. Talk to the author, a casual chat with a big business book author. So that everyone's aware, Resource YYC is a co-working community geared to professionals. And we've got private office spaces, dedicated desks, and virtual office options. And talking with Richard today is our co-founder, Ron. So over to you, Ron. Thanks, Rosemary. And yeah, I encourage everyone uh, to come on down and check out the space. Um, and thanks for everybody who joined us live today and by podcast. Um, and uh, the purpose of this podcast is really, we like to introduce uh, people to local Calgary business uh, authors and really help build a community of professionals in Calgary. So appreciate everybody who's joined in. Um, I'm a management consultant myself. So selfishly, I actually get to learn a lot from these and I know they um, can be quite valuable. So uh, um, again, and, and again, uh, if you join us live, uh, we'll, if you have any questions, uh, once the podcast is done, we'll have time for conversation. So maybe a bit before we start, I'll just do a little uh, talk a bit about our guest today. It's Richard uh, Bucher. He, Richard is an executive coach, uh, senior career management and career uh, transition uh, executive. And his specialties are in career coaching, and management for individuals and organizations. He's a professional speaker and author with over 30 years of experience. Um, and he's the get a job guy columnist uh, for CBC, uh, Calgary Eye Opener for quite a few years. So many of you will have heard him in that role. Um, uh, he is a uh, master Berkman certified MBTI and uh, Forte assessment, uh, certified Forte assessment tools. And uh, he's, also, a, as well as being a skilled speaker, he's an empathetic listener, storyteller at heart, guiding clients to their purpose. Uh, and today, we specifically have a chance to talk about uh, Richard's book, uh, Your Path to Purpose. So uh, welcome today, Richard. Thanks very much, Ron. Yeah. Thanks, Ron. And, uh, and you are, uh, so you're a Calgarian. Uh, well, I, I, I should be careful about saying this, but originally I'm from Montreal, but I have been uh, Western Canadian f uh, since the 1980s, the Calgarian since 1980. Oh, okay. Well, you know what? You're as good as any Calgarian, I'd say. So it's it's well, not often you find one that was born and bred here. So yeah, um, yeah but you, you, so you spent most of your career here and it, as well as uh, done some yes. international work here. And, and yeah. actually maybe, you know what, if you don't mind... Uh, just by way of a bit of an introduction, what uh, kind of leading up to writing the book, what has your career been? Well, it, it's, um, you know, it's interesting. Um, I was going through my second career transition, my second unplanned career transition. I was working with a coach with an outplacement company and I was in the middle of the conversation when I realized this sort of having this conversation with myself while I'm having a conversation with my coach and I'm realizing that the person that's sitting in the chair being my coach is in the job that I realize that that's what I want. That's, oh, that's why I'm walking planet Earth. I'm supposed to be working with people like me who are trying to figure themselves out and what next is. The only difference in this scenario is he was in that chair and I was the client. Now, coincidentally, several years later, I got to hire him as part of my team, which <laughs> felt like Luke Skywalker hiring Yoda. Um, <laughs> But that's really the point where my where my career in in uh, in career and, and coaching started, and that was a little over thirty years ago. Okay. And since that time, I've been working with lots of people in transition. I spend uh, probably more more of my time now working with leaders and developing leaders. Uh, it's kind of a third, a third, a third. But the other third is being uh, clients that are in transition now and trying to figure out what next looks like. And do you find so? Do you find difference between so it sounds like you work with individuals, leaders, and then corporations on transitions. Yep. Do you find uh, it's a lot of the same principles or do you have to tailor between them? Well, every client is different. And, um, and even if they're not, you treat them as a unique entity. Mm -hmm. And every individual comes to, comes to this journey um, with their own history and their own background. Most recently, I've just finished doing a, an executive interview 360 <clears throat> on a CEO. He's just finished. He's just had his first anniversary with the, the company and the board decided they wanted to do a 360. Um, I've done a bunch of them on, on leaders, 
they're all different. They're each unique, different personality. So you you honor that in every conversation. Yeah, and you no, know, you after thirty years, it's interesting actually to say because because a lot of people teach, but they never had to be the student. But you actually said you started out as a student, and yep. you've been through transitions. So the the life journey for you has uh, been probably part of the experience that helped lead up to your book as well. Absolutely, and and in fact. Uh, when I, just as I was going out on my own, uh, I had been working with another firm and went through a transition of my own at the time to get a job guy. And it was quite interesting because I shared this story with you. Um, I was having a conversation with David Gray, the host of the Eye Opener. And um, he had, I was mentioning that I'd, I'd just been laid off. And he said, so the get a job guy needs to get a job? Is that what you're telling me? <laughs> And uh, what's that like? And I said, well, you know, I, uh, we, he and I had had lots of conversations. So uh, he's aware of the kind of advice that I give. And I he said, well, how would you rate the quality of your advice? I said, it's exceptionally good. <laughs> uh, it, it's even better when you follow it. But I have to tell you, as the person that now has to follow my own yeah. advice, it's exceedingly annoying. <laughs> you know, I it's interesting. So I've been through transition and I actually think if there's one city where people know about transition, it's Calgary. Oh. Um, on the good times, the, even on the good times, people are transitioning all the time, let alone the, the last, you know, since 2015 has been quite, yeah. the, quite the path. And now we're on the other side of it, but there are so many people in Calgary uh, going through transition. And, uh, yeah. you know, it's, what, it, it's a tough slog. Cause so, so, I, so I went through your book and went, you know, some of this stuff, it's really good to to reiterate and read, and then when the time comes, you have to put it into practice, right? So, yeah. um, which is actually a good segue to your book because uh, um, you know, right the right the first page, um, and you know, it had some introduction and just some comments on your book, but it was described as a practical how-to uh, piece, and so many books fail to provide uh, that how-to portion of it. So, so maybe actually just talk a bit about how your book is set up and how you, because it's more than just academic reading material, you actually have set it up as, as a bit of a workbook, right? Absolutely. And, and I think it's, it's probably best described. Well, I, I, in fact, I'm not going to describe it for you. I'm going to let the clients, the, uh, the readers that have bought the book. Um, and I'll, oh, I'll sorry, talk. I'll, it just got out, sound cut out just for a second. Okay, sorry. So I'll share with you what people who have read the book have told me what yeah. it's like. Uh, most of the people that have a copy of this book know me. Uh, and some of them know me well, and, and many of them ha have been clients of mine. Mm -hmm. And uh, every one of those people has said, reading your book is exactly like having a conversation with you. It's like having you in the room. It's like you're in my head and I can hear your voice. And uh, to which I usually say, well, I'm profoundly sad for invading you, or sorry <laughs> for invading your personal space. Uh, but they say that, but that's why it works, because often what, the way books come across is, uh, you know, like you read a book by Eckhart Tolle or Wayne Dyer. These are thought leaders, the, the modern day uh, uh, mystics, really. Yeah. Uh, they're brilliant, brilliant people who've been steeped in, in their area of expertise for a really, really long time. And it it can be a real stretch for, for us ordinary folk to, to read, that, read that content and connect to it. Um, so what I was trying to do with this book was really stand with the reader shoulder to shoulder, looking at what they're looking at. And so the two of us sort of explore it together. So you recall when we were talking about it, I've had my half of the conversation with the reader in what I've written. And you're gonna have your half of the conversation with me in what you write. So if you thought about this book as a conversation, that's a really good metaphor. And, and so through a series of reflections, I give the reader a bit of content, and then I give them, give them some questions on that theme to help tease out the pieces, the threads that then become the core that is their purpose. Uh, and so ultimately, when you get to the, to the last chapter that's entitled, So What?, it really is intending to pull all of the learning from all of the chapters uh, into uh, what is a what's what is a chart that the center of which is the word purpose. Mm -hmm. so you start to understand 
all the little pieces that make up the reason I'm breathing. Well, you know, it, it actually, it, it's a, it's a self-assessment tool in many ways, right? But it, it's, yeah. a self, it's, it seems like it's a really a self-discovery tool. Um, and when you're going through transition, it's interesting because, uh, you know, a lot of transition is very tactical, right? Uh, you know, here's yep. like your resume and a lot of tactical things, but, but you've wrote it uh, more from that understand yourself and then, then go, you know, then, then approach what you want to do. So, so maybe actually what prompted you to write it that way? Yeah. Um, and cause it's, it is different than other books. So, so how do yeah. you decide in the end to write it in this format in this way? Well, and it's interesting because if you've ever been through a career transition program, if anybody on this call has been through one, they'll understand that often the first thing the career transition company does or the coach does is administer an assessment instrument of some kind, Myers-Briggs, Berkman, you know, whatever. Uh, and that's intended to connect to this inner part of you, your innate preferences. Well, uh, when I started this book, it really was born out of the fact that for probably more than 30 years, every week over those 30 years, I'd had people come to my door, two, three, five, eight people, primarily with the issue that I have no idea what I want to do. Yeah. Thinking about going back to what I was doing before is making me ill. I don't know what I want to do when I, when I grow up. Uh, I, I fell into that career and I, I'm not sure whether it's something I want to keep on doing. I'm not even sure why I have this degree. I just don't know what to do next. Yeah. I'm, I'm just lost. Or any, and any iteration of that. So I thought there's a bigger question here behind people that are in the middle of a transition they hadn't planned on. And it isn't helped by going through multiple transitions because we're, we're skipping sp uh, stones across the surface of a pond and we're not getting to the essence of what the person is. So if we can get inside to figure out why, why do these things come naturally to me? Why am I really good at this? What does that mean? What's the intention? What's the purpose of that capability of that giftedness? If we can come to an understanding of what that is, all the other pieces fall into place. We've got a North Star so that now when our feet are coming out from under the covers in the morning, we know exactly the direction that they're headed. We, our to-do list is, is almost automatic because we know why we're here and what it is we need to do next, as opposed to, you know, filling a page with a list of things that are sort of, uh, I guess I'll do that. And I guess I'll do that. Yeah. Well, I'm, I, it, it really is. And, and people are, especially if you've lost your job or going through a transition, it's just fairly overwhelming. Right. So yeah. It, what I found is it's a methodical way to kind of get your thoughts together too, right? Um, yeah. And, and it really is just like you say, to get to know yourself, get to your North Star. But I would imagine even with best intentions, um, if you don't take a methodical approach, um, you're probably going to be pulled, especially under a stressful situation, you'll be pulled in a million directions. So, um, yeah. so it looks like, and, and maybe we can actually talk about, you know, you've broken the book down into uh, some kind of sections that are methodical, right? So um, the first one, um, you know, we talked a bit about it before, but it's a conversational style. But the first seems to me the first section is really about really your purpose and understanding your inner self, right? So you want to speak to a bit about what that what that process is there? Well, yeah. So it it's um um the the drive behind it, Ron, is that um, when I think about all the conversations I've had with clients over the years, yeah. we're trying to conjugate this equation in our head. Yeah. We're trying to use our mental capabilities, our, our emotional intelligence, not our, sorry, not our emotional intelligence, but our intellectual quotient to solve this problem. Uh, you know, many clients and readers have said to me, if I just knew what the options out there were, yeah then I could decide what I want to do next. The only problem is that they'd be dead for a, de a decade yeah. before, before they finally looked at all of the options and then decided the one that they want. It's kind of like saying, and sorry, am I digressing a bit, but it's kind of like saying if you had a son come home, came home and said, well, I'm, I, haven't just, I'm, I, I want to get married, but I don't know to who. So I'm going to travel the world <laughs> and I'm going to meet every woman of the, the age I'm interested in everywhere in the world. And then by the time I get back to Calgary, then I'll know who I'm going to be. Now I'll know who I'm going to marry. 
the like, problem being is the person would be dead for 10 years by the time they got back here yeah. and they wouldn't be any clearer. So what I tell my clients and what the first part of the book is really about is the answer to your question is not found out there. It never was going to be found out there and it won't be found out there today. It's going to be found right in here. Yeah. Notice where I'm putting my hand. I'm intentionally not putting it on my head. It's over my heart. Yeah. That's well, where the answer that's where the answer is. Yeah. And you said and the, well, go ahead, sorry. And then it's going to be expressed out there. So I'm going to, when I figure out what my purpose is, I am going to express it out there, out in the real world. But if my exploration is excluded to what's outside my office window right now, uh, I'll have another birthday before I get any closer to the answer. And the only thing that'll happen is I'll be a year older. Yeah, well, actually, well, just first of all, actually, you know, the mic, the sound cut out a bit when you backed away. So, oh, so sorry. Sorry. Uh, no problem, uh, but I think we caught that. And I was going to say, you had talked before a bit about some signposts, really, to help people along that that little discovery session. There, what do you what do you mean by the signposts? Well, in these the, you know early early conversations, and in the, folks will see this in the book. Is um, I'll ask people, um, what do you really love to do? Mm -hmm. um, what are you really good at? Um, what does your world need you to do? And then what can you be paid to do? And some people will recognize that. Well, that sounds like icky guy. And if you don't know what icky guy is, yeah. Google it. And even if you don't know how to spell it, Google will know what it is and it'll, it'll show you. You'll see some similar content. It's yeah. a based on Japanese philosophy that's about 4,000 years old. Um, but I will also always look or encourage the folks I'm talking to or that either through my book or we're talking live, um, to think about what have I always been good at? W what am I doing when I lose track of time? What do I really love to do? Because those are the signposts that are pointing us in a direction. So um, your background is engineering, Ron? Yeah, operations engineering, you betcha. Okay. Now, we could agree that, uh, so you have a, you have a BSc engineering? Uh, tech, but then a master's. Okay. Okay. So then a master's degree in engineering and a, and a, and a diploma in, in, uh, in engineering. So oh, obviously probably worse. probably worse. I'm an MBA, but <laughs> okay. I've All totally right. mixed myself up, but yes, I hope that doesn't mess up your analogy. <laughs> no, no, no. But, but my point being is that we could agree for, for someone to be successful pursuing that line of study, yeah. they have to have some measure of aptitude yeah. in order to do it successfully. And if we want to really look, analyze that, well, how did you get, how did that happen? How did you end up with that innate capability, with that innate giftedness, if you'll accept that, that frame? So was it God or the universe that spun a bottle and it landed on engineering? Like, is that what happened? Well, it, our, our purpose is programmed into our DNA. Yeah. And our DNA comes from our mom and dad and their mom and dad and their mom and dad back and back and back. It's absolutely not even close to being an accident that you're good at what you're good at or that Rosemary's good at what she's good at. And that's a big frickin' road sign saying, walk this way. Not that yeah. way, this way. Yeah. So that's that's huge. And, you know, I, I mean, and in having this conversation, thinking about all the people that I've talked to, especially in Calgary, and especially the people that came out of the oil and gas industry, right? Because mm -hmm. you know, there was they knew what they did, they knew they do it, did it well, um, and then it all collapsed out from under them. And a few people have had some really difficult time transitioning, but yeah. I've watched some people really transition to something that that didn't seem to be them, right? Yeah. Um, and I'm not sure. You know, I think a lot of people had no choice. But it sounds to me like, you know, putting some time and thought into it, you can actually be a little more deliberate, deliberate about those directions. Then. Yeah, and I, and, and I think it's, it's important to go further to say yeah. that, because uh, if folks that were listening to that would think, well, okay, so if let's just say, follow Richard's model here, I, I have a BSc in engineering, I got a PNG and a PMP and a CMC and an MOUSC, so I'm set for the rest of my life. I know exactly what I'm going to do, and well, wait a minute. I'm working in oil and gas. I'm working as an engineer. I just lost my job. You can't buy a job in engineering and oil and gas today, mm -hmm. for some at least. Now what? Does that mean my purpose is gone now? 
No, let's agree, you and I, that our purpose is deeper than an occupation. Yeah. So the occupation that Rosemary has and that you have and that I have is an expression of our purpose. Yeah. Our, our purpose evolves over time. So my story is, if you might have seen this in the book, uh, I was in high school, not performing well, uh, <laughs> according to my parents. If you look at my marks, you would agree with my parents' perspective. <laughs> and so they sent me to a vocational center. It was the Jewish Vocational Center in Montreal. Uh, to this day, it's probably the preeminent vocational center anywhere in Canada and perhaps in North America. You don't know why you're walking planet Earth and you want to take a traditional approach to figure out why, go see them and they'll give you an answer, guaranteed. So for two weeks after school, I was going having psychiatric tests, psychological tests, interest tests, aptitude tests, you name it, two or three hours after school every day. At the end of it, the, the psychologist who was the program director sat down and said, Richard, you are of average to above average intelligence. <laughs> and yes, I interpreted that as code speak saying you probably should phone somebody to come pick you up because you're probably not smart enough to find your way home on your own. <laughs> and then they went on to say that when you look at all the occupations that align with your profile, the occupation best suited to you is to teach. Hmm. And it is our recommendation further that you should finish high school. So in Montreal at the time, you, high school ended at grade 11. There's no grade 12 in Quebec. And you should go to Montreal Teachers College. And in 12 months, I could have had a teaching certificate and I could have been teaching your kids yeah. history, which you don't know me, but that should probably scare you to death. <laughs> and so you, you might be thinking, well, what a great gift. I mean, you, you didn't even have to do any work except answer some questions. And they said, here's your purpose. Here's your, here's your career, your future. What I heard instead was, Richard, you're not very smart. <laughs> And really, there's only one job that, of all the jobs available on planet Earth that you really have any shot at doing in any way at all. So, and then it's to teach. Mm -hmm. and, and we're so convinced that we're right, that you know, don't even bother thinking about anywhere else. You should leave this office, go to teacher's college, get your certificate, and then go teach. And please, I profound apologies to any teachers here present. <laughs> My wife is a school teacher, by the way. And as it happens, I'm now on faculty at MRU. Uh, um, but what I was thinking was, I'm, I'm better than that. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to prove you wrong. And for the next 20 years of my life, which ended up being a desert experience, I was only smart enough to go from the mess I was in into one just like it. I finally thought this can't be right. This, I cannot believe my life was intended for this. I mean, what a waste. And I don't want another 20 of the, the 20 years like the last 20. And, in, and through all of that, I became crystal clear on what it was I really wanted to do, which meant turning the mirrors inside to see what's inside inner space. I knew the answer wasn't out there and I found it. So the book is not academic. It's very oh. self-awareness and self, self is the journey you're on. And actually, so, so I do have to, there are some things in there though that uh, you have that, that are, uh, you know, I've read it, but maybe you can speak to it because you actually talk about your inner and external elders, right? Mm -hmm. And 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 understanding yourself. So we talked a bit about understanding yourself. But what do you mean by inner and external elder? So I, I borrow from and with with um, with deep respect for uh, our indigenous uh, our indigenous people. Um, you, you may know, and I don't profess to have a deep understanding mm -hmm. of, of, um, of their spirituality, mm -hmm. but in, in their communities, they have an, they have elders and the elders are the keeper of the knowledge. So unlike, uh, European, uh, culture or Western or Western culture, our history is written down. And as we're starting to learn the written, the history that we've that we studied in school isn't even close to what actually happened. There's a whole big chunks of it that weren't even talked about. So, but their history is all passed down through story. And so um, members of their, of their culture learn about themselves, their language and their culture through these elders. And they are the repository of all of this wisdom and all of this knowledge. Well, as I started to explore that further and through a lot of the reading that I did, I discovered that 
we have external elders and we can talk about that and how you'd apply it through the methodology I talk about in the book. But we also have this wisdom within ourselves. It's, it's all this information that we take in every moment that we're alive, every day that, and through our conscious, conscious part of the day when our eyes are, well, not necessarily open, but when our senses are awake. And all of that information has, has knowledge for us, has insight for us. There's wisdom there. Mm -hmm. And all we have to do is tap into it. So there's an inner elder that is, is responding to and noticing what we're, what we're walking in and out of every day. Uh, the challenges that we're experiencing. It has thoughts and ideas about how to approach things. Um, and, and so part of what I'm trying to do through this book is help people connect to that inner wisdom that's been there all along. Uh, I talk a little bit about, you may have come across this, about peripheral senses. So you go through your day and even right now, so I can see Ron, I can see uh, Rosemary, I can see Bruce, and then I can see the names of the other, hi Bruce, I can see the other people that are on the call. Uh, and, and so, you know, I might think, well, that, you know, Bruce is not germane to this conversation. So I'm just telling this story, but I noticed him. Well, all the way through my day, I'm going to, I'm going to be seeing things, hearing things, smelling things, feeling things, but I'm not paying attention to them because they're not relevant because I'm talking to Ron right now. No. Well, if we'll take some time every day to unpack the learning we've been offered, that inner elder will share information, things that might be really important to us. And this could only take like 10, 15 minutes as we transition from our work day to our evening day. Um, so what did the day offer me in terms of learning that might be really useful or helpful for me today? So I'm gonna invite everybody that's on this call. You can see the names, I presume like I can. I'd be curious about who are these people? I'd look at their LinkedIn profile and wonder now what is it about this conversation with Ron that caused these people to show up? What's their background? What's their story? Because there might be something that they're being offered that has nothing to do with what I'm saying. What about, so the external elder, does that tie into that then? Yes. So the, the external elder, I, I frame it a little bit differently in that I, I talk about a personal board of directors. Yeah. I don't know. Have you heard about that before? Yeah. yeah. Um, Bruce, have you heard about a personal board of directors before? Oh, he's on muted. <laughs> I know he is. Well, he yeah. can nod or no. Yeah. He can say yes or no. Yeah, okay. So it, it's a group of, it's, it's a team of advisors, yeah. right? So these are people who have a wisdom and, an, and a knowing that um, w can be really helpful to us. So these are people that know us, mm -hmm. that care about us, that want the best for us. These are people that we'd re we would reach out to when we have uh, uh, a point in our life where we're at a crossroads. We need some insights and some different perspectives and input. And we consult with those elders uh, to seek their wisdom and, and just sort of lay out for them. Here's what, where I'm at. Here's what I'm seeing. Uh, I'd appreciate your view, your wisdom. What do you think? So we have that conversation. You know, I, I think it's an important point because a lot of people go through their journeys even, and, and I expect, you know, it's not even people in transition, it's the executives, people in yep. jobs who do it as a solo sport, right? And yeah. life's not really a solo sport. In fact, you, you're only looking one way, right? So totally. Uh, you know, yeah. the last time it was important that you did it all by yourself was when you, I'm not sure what age it is, but it would have been about the time you transitioned from diapers to pull ups. Yeah. I did it all by myself. That's the last time it was important that you did it all by yourself. And as a parent with a, well, my son's now 26, so we're yeah. well past that. But, <laughs> but beyond that, you don't get extra points for doing it all by yourself. Oh, and if so. you're sitting, if you're sitting in, a, in this call, if you're in a place in life and you're not sure what next is, and you're trying to do this all by yourself, that's profoundly stupid. Yeah. Why would you do that? And by the way, I tell it, 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 you'll see this, it's in my book. Yeah. Everybody that, that has a copy of the book has an hour of my time and it won't cost them a nickel. And I'll go further to that to say that anybody that's on this call today that wants to have a conversation with me, you have an hour of my time and it won't cost you a nickel and I won't bring the book because you can't, you won't be able to buy it from me and I won't sell you a damn thing. Don't, don't bring your cart, your credit card or your checkbook. I'll even buy the coffee. Perfect. Well, so so we're actually we're going to try to keep the podcast portion within 
reasonable within a half an hour, but I'm going to say so. So I think you kind of got into it actually. So on, you know, outside of the book, this is really a bit of a workbook that you use um, either formally or informally in, in yep. what would be a consulting role or, or when you're speaking with clients and executives then. Absolutely. And, and it has application beyond me figuring out my purpose yeah. to, and, and we talked a bit about this the other day, imagine a team where every team member knew their purpose. Yeah. Every team member knew their job's purpose. Mm -hmm. Every team knew its purpose and the organ and they worked for an organization that knew it's their purpose. Yeah. Imagine what that would be like. So it has application within an organization. I'm going to do a retreat with the senior leadership team of a cryptocurrency company coming up a uh, week after next. And, and this is a newly formed company in an, in a growing and leading brand new industry. Yeah. They better be rock solid on why they're doing this. And it's not just about making money. Otherwise what's, what's the glue that's holding them all together. Yeah. And more, more and more people are not the days of working just for an income is over. It's, it's, it's about purpose. Even if people can't articulate it, they are looking for a little more purpose, right? So exactly. Yeah. So, okay. So I'm going to just a couple things I'm going to trans is there book two or is there revisions of this book? What's your next writing uh, adventure going to be? Well, so I'm, I'm working on a, a book called five pillars of sustainable career mastery. Yeah. Um, so uh, um, just finished chapter one. So it's, I, I don't, we didn't talk about this. I don't think but that the book we've been talking about took eight years to write. Yeah. Sorry, I took eight years to write it. It didn't <laughs> take eight years to write. This one will be finished much sooner uh, this year for sure. Uh, and, and probably long before the end of the year. Um, and then I'm working on some other content, which is sort of encapsulates a little bit of what, we, what we've been talking about. It's branded as uh, six weeks to traction. I'm going to be uh, running that through uh, a pega actually and also mm -hmm. through the calgary public library for folks that might want to know more about it and so it, it'd be the same like it, it really these are these aren't academic books there's another one same it sounds like no. almost like a workshop again a workbook to go along with the practical stuff yeah and the, and the five pillars is really about how do i run my career in a way that has me going in the direction and sustaining the direction that i want over the course of a lifetime the six weeks to traction really is about i'm stuck I'm profoundly stuck. I'm really, really badly stuck. I don't know what to do. Nothing I'm doing is working. Now what the hell do I do? So that that content is to address that situation. Oh, cool. Uh, well, that would be that would be a good part two to this. And uh, any advice? There might be someone on the line who says, "Hey, I want to write a book. What's your advice?" Um, well, I'll give you the advice that I got from yeah. one of my clients who became an author. Um, and this will sound silly, start writing. Yep. Like if, you, if you've decided I want to I want to write, um, I'm going to guess you have an idea. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to encourage you today, before this day is done, before your head hits that pillow, write a page. Oh. I don't know what to write about. It's really hard. I don't know what to do. Oh, shut the hell up and just start writing. <laughs> That's what she told me. Just shut up and start writing. Oh, yeah. Well, I don't know what the chapter headings are. I don't even know what it does. Shut up and start writing. Mm -hmm. It's just the, and that made the difference that and I told you when we were talked about this, I had a journal yeah. and I was physically writing longhand my book and it for years that's the only copy that existed. And so, I'd open the book and I just start the pen would move across. The so for all the engineering types like myself, you don't have to actually have it all laid out ahead of time. No, <laughs> and and it's a cool problem to solve because you're going to build content. It's not like you don't know what to talk about. There's lots of stuff that you can add. Don't worry about flow. Don't worry about where this belongs as compared to that. Yeah. Um, you, I have an editor that, and I gave the whole manuscript to, and I said, Karen, here you go. And she had worked on my master's thesis and worked with me before on other stuff. And so she knows how I think. Um, and I'll introduce you if you're ever, if you get to the point where you have a manuscript you want to work with. And she, she organized it in all of the chapter headings oh, and, uh, and it worked out great. Good. Well, and, and it sound actually, if you wrote it over that period of time, I mean, very personal too, because it was literally yeah. your thoughts and writings of the day. So that's yeah. great advice. So, so we'll see yeah. how many people write their first page after today. Yeah. Um, I'd be happy uh, to read whatever you're working maybe, on. I maybe, maybe I'll start my book today. <laughs> so there you go. 
Good. You know, um, tons of stuff. I could chat with you all day, Richard, actually, but actually we do want to, you know, um, for anyone that does want your book, and we talked a bit about this before, or want to get in touch with you, what's the best way to do that, Richard? So I'm on LinkedIn. That's an easy way. Um, um, uh, you can find my website, which is yourpathtopurpose.net. Mm -hmm. um, those are probably the two easiest ways. Uh, and it's richard at yourpathtopurpose.net. Um, yeah, that's probably the easiest. Okay, that's okay. And we will post those links uh, on our website as well with this. And, and of course, Perfect. this will be recorded. So if anybody wants to come back and watch it again or knows someone who should, you can go to our website. And I would like to thank you for taking the time today, Richard. It's a great conversation. Um, you know, and, and it really is, it's probably timeless uh, conversation, but really timely in Calgary because it's just been nonstop transition for a lot yeah. of people. So yeah. uh, I really do appreciate your time, actually. Thanks, Thanks again. For, Thanks. For, kind of, anything, thank and you. actually, uh, maybe just one last word. Is there anything we didn't talk about that, that we should share before we end? Uh, how much time you got? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, uh, one nugget. <laughs> um, yeah, um, the tagline to the book, it, it's enough to be on your way, your path to purpose. Yeah. Uh, remember, no matter where you are in this whole process, yeah. remember, it's enough to be on your way. Yeah, good advice. It's enough to be on your way. Hold that. Hold that in your heart. That's good. If you're on your, if you're on your way at all, way to go. Keep the faith. It's, you're, you're, it's going to work. It's going to happen. Good. Well, thanks for any on that advice. Uh, Rosemary, I'm going to hand it back to you. And when we're wrapped up, Anyone who's joined us live will have a Q&A time with Richard. So thanks again. Thanks, Ron. All right. Thank you, Ron. And thank you, Richard. That was a great conversation. And I hope everyone can join us for another one of our podcasts in the future. All right. Bye.